The National Police Chiefs Council says the police take all reports of malicious communications seriously and will investigate but must prioritise their finite resources. The main social media companies all say they don't promote hate on their platforms and take action to stop it. They each have algorithms that offer us content based on things we've posted, liked or watched in the past. Internet researcher Chloe Colliver is helping us run an experiment to test the algorithms. What we're not able to see as researchers, journalists or the public is the way that platforms themselves recommend information to different people. So really, some of the only ways to do this are like creating a profile um, and seeing the kind of rabbit hole that it might be led down by the platform itself. So meet Barry. He's not real and neither is this profile picture. We've set up accounts in his name on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and YouTube. We switched on all the privacy settings to protect other users and Barry didn't send any abuse. But we've designed him to be just like the people who abuse me. He's mainly interested in anti-vax content and conspiracy theories and also follows some accounts hostile to women. So engaging with that conspiracy content but also engaging with a little bit of the misogynistic content. Yeah, definitely. I think it's important to capture the misogynistic side of these accounts that you've said have sent you um, that kind of abuse. Right from the start, Barry engaged with content recommended to him by the social media platforms. After two weeks, TikTok hadn't promoted any anti-women content and not much was suggested by Twitter either. But YouTube had offered some videos hostile to women. And on Facebook and Instagram, Barry was recommended more and more anti-women content, some involving disturbing sexual violence. What I think is really shocking is the extremity of some of this content that's being revealed within just a couple of weeks of quite minimal activity that you've conducted using this account. Far from stopping Barry engaging with anti-women content, Facebook and Instagram appear to have promoted it. There was very little activity that was chosen by you to actually directly search for something. So what that implies is that the platforms themselves have sent this profile the majority of this content themselves and selected it, curated it and targeted it. So actually, this profile, if it were a real person, would have been brought into a hateful community full of misogynistic content very, very quickly within two weeks. Facebook, which also owns Instagram, says it tries not to recommend content that breaks its rules and is improving its technology to find and remove abuse more quickly. YouTube says it has strict policies on hate and quickly removes content that breaks its rules. That wasn't the only thing in the experiment that struck me. Originally, Barry's main interest was conspiracy theories, at the start, I'd expected him to be inundated with that sort of content, but he wasn't. That could be because Facebook had been pressured to take action on other issues like COVID misinformation, anti-vaccine misinformation, uh, by the press, by policymakers and the public, um, whereas they haven't really been pressured in the same way to take action on harassment against women or violent content targeting women online. So it seems they can adjust their algorithms when they want to. You know, the people who have been smart enough to create these online platforms for us, I think are smart enough to work the system so that this online hatred can be, if not entirely eradicated, then substantially diminished. Nearly three billion people worldwide use Facebook. Last year, it made on average $31 in advertising revenue per user. The longer people stay on the platform, the more the tech giant makes. That sensational, extreme or anger-inducing content keeps your attention longer, makes you engage more with the content on the site and therefore allows them to sell more adverts. So they are driving up their bottom line by keeping people's interest in horrible, uh, violent, often misogynistic content. 